Hello dear readers and subscribers. Becoming a successful artist or your chances of becoming a successful artist depend on numerous factors. And in today's video, we're going to discuss and list all these factors. We're going to discuss a chapter from this little book here, a book that we have already um, discussed in a previous video on 10 habits of successful artists. And this is a book created by an art historian, a contemporary artist and an art world superstar, sharing inside information, advice and especially in-field experience uh, on how to become successful and how to navigate uh, the so-called art system in this book. As a result, today we're going to share these factors with you and we're also going to try to improve them. Even more, they have developed a system in which you can give yourself grades on how well you're scoring uh, when it comes to these different factors. And I would invite you throughout this video to um, do this exercise with us. So if you score very, very good on uh, a certain factor, then you can give yourself um, a score of one. If it's just good, then you can give yourself a score of two. Satisfactory is three. Sufficient, four. Poor is five. And insufficient is six. So the lower your score, the better your chances for success. And by writing these factors down, we can see where we should pay a bit more attention or focus to, to improve our chances for success. So without further ado, let's get started. The first factor are contacts. Contacts are the be all and end all for you. Many things function through recommendations. They can get you exhibitions, put you in touch with galleries and so on. So who do you know in the art world? If you're good friends with the curator of a local art museum, that's classified as satisfactory. But if you are close friends with an international curator, such as Hans Ulrich Obrist, then, of course, that is classified as very good. So feel free to write down your score 1 up to 6. Up next, assets or money. Money is necessary for survival and, when used wisely, can compensate for many factors. It can also open up a door or two. How much money can you spend each month? If you can cover your living expenses plus a few materials, then that's classified as sufficient. If your fixed costs are covered and you have 10k or more at your disposal every month, then that is classified as good and very good. Next we have time. Time is of course the basis of any activity in life. How much time can you devote to your art career each week? 17 hours is just about sufficient. 70 hours or more is very good. So make sure that you have a very good work-life art balance. That's a, a term that we have used frequently on this channel in which you don't have any financial pressure, but you do have at least around 17 hours every week to work on your art. Next, we have your career to date. Many players in the art system today rely heavily on an artist resume to evaluate him or her. Where are you studying or where did you study? what residencies, awards, exhibitions, and so on are included on your resume, and how relevant are they, or how well have you optimized your resume. This is something we have covered extensively on this channel here, so if you're interested in how to set up your uh, artist resume in an industry-approved manner, make sure to watch that video next, or how you can improve your resume uh, with little to no experience. Last week we also did a video to find art opportunities for artists to improve that resume. So as this is ranked rather highly on this list, make sure to pay some attention to this if you're not scoring too well here. The fifth factor is ambition. Ambition drives every career. So how ambitious are you? Are you ready to give everything for your art career? Are you satisfied if you have an exhibition at a local branch of a bank? Then this is classified as insufficient. But if you want to go to the Museum of Modern Art and you're willing to give it your all, that's classified as very good. Next up, we have where you live and work. Not every place of residence and work offers the same optimal conditions for participating in the art system. Are you in a hip metropolis or in a shack somewhere in the boonies? Rome, Madrid, Zurich and Shanghai are classed as good. Berlin, Paris, LA, London and New York are very good. To discover more about medium-sized art cities or the biggest art cities in the world, we have also dedicated a video and article on this topic. Next, we have smartness. As an artist, you need to understand the interrelationships in the art system. Many career decisions require a clear mind and goal-oriented action. How smart are you? How well do you know the art system? How awake is your spirit? And how well can you see these interrelationships? When it comes to getting to know this art system or 
as we call it here, the art world, you can either find out more about it in the book in question or by reading our article uh, explained what is the art world. Next, we have perseverance. A successful career as an artist doesn't happen overnight. You have to develop artistically, you have to build up a network, and so on. All these tasks take a lot of time and energy. How quickly do you give up? Can you also overcome dry spells? How well can you manage setbacks, etc.? Number nine is diligence. Producing art is simply essential, and the more hardworking you are, the better. However, diligence is not only required in the studio. How hard do you work in the studio, but also on your art career in general? For instance, networking, improving your resume, or finding art opportunities. These things also require diligence. Number 10, luck. Luck is part of life and must not be left out of your career. Are you someone no one wants to play dice with because you simply always seem to win? Can you more or less rely on fortune to always be on your side? In the art world, sometimes you need a little bit luck. However, we can also try to improve our position to get lucky. And that's what we're doing here with this channel. And that's also what this book wants to teach you. 11, age. No one takes you seriously when you're 20 and after 35, you're already ready for the scrap heap, assuming you haven't had a breakthrough yet. If you are 25 years old and have finished your art studies, that's classed as very good. If you are 45 years old without having made a breakthrough, that is classed as poor. When it comes to this factor, I don't entirely agree. Yes, there is a sweet spot in age where you're starting to be taken seriously, but also have the prospect or the term of a young emerging artist. However, there are numerous examples of artists who only had breakthrough moments or even started at a later age, 40 or 50, and still managed to have a good career. So yes, chances might drop slightly if you hadn't had a breakthrough before your 35th birthday when it comes to entering that 1% of the art world or to be represented by a mega gallery, but you still have very good chances to enter the top 10% or even the top 5%, which is also a very successful art career. Every single age comes with its advantages and disadvantages. If you're too young, nobody takes you seriously, but as you get older, you also have perhaps a bit more time, a bit more resources, more experience, more charisma, etc. 12. Your artistic work. This is about the work itself. In which medium do you work? Are the contents and statements of your art in demand right now? If you work only with a lot of dedication but without reference to the art world most of the time, that's insufficient. However, if your work is contemporary and clearly located in the artistic canon, then that's very good. I 100% agree with this factor, but the position on its list, uh, simply not. I would put it right at the top of this very list. I believe it is possible to succeed as an artist simply because your work is so irresistible. However, do not use these examples um, as um, an alibi not to work on the other factors. Art always comes first and great art will prevail. 13. Your demeanor. Artists are not only defined by their art, but their demeanor and social interactions also significantly determine how they are perceived in the art system. So how charismatic are you? How good are you with your people skills? Are you convincing as an exciting artistic personality? 14. Environment. The social and professional environment in which you operate is also crucial for your mindset. Do you move mainly in the art system, in the art world? How much time do you spend with people from the professional art system? Up next, we have family. Your family is the first possible means of support. In the best case, it can support you financially and opens doors for you through their contacts. But it can also be a hindrance or irrelevant to your career. How much can you benefit from your family in terms of your art career? Through money, education or reputation? 16. Citizenship and multiculturalism. If you're at home in two or more cultures or countries, you will, in a best case scenario, have the opportunity to advance your career in more than one place. Do your multiculturalism or citizenship or your multiple citizenships help you get additional funding or other advantages in the art system? And to conclude, gender, ethnicity, and so on. In fact, even these attributes are always subject to trends and current events. For instance, white, Christian, heterosexual men are not in vogue right now but simultaneously they might have easier access to other beneficial factors from this list. A good example, for instance, is if we have a look at the data on the rise of Ukrainian artists uh, these days, 
due to the war, of course. So this is a very paradoxical but very telling um, um, example of how current events can affect the careers of artists. These 17 factors will have a great influence on your chances for success. So if you're scoring at certain points less than two, then I would advise you to pay some attention to them. To find more information and industry-proofed career advice, feel free to stay tuned here on this channel, but also definitely consider um, uh, this publication. I agree with over 95% of the content of this book. It's written by people with genuine experience in the art world who are doing it this day. And uh, sometimes when I'm reading it, it almost feels as if I have written it myself. So definitely have a look at everything for art. I will link to the book in the description below and in the pinned comments. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Feel free to watch our previous video about everything for art, 10 habits of successful artists next. Support us on Patreon and please consider subscribing to stay posted for more contemporary art. Bye.